Okay, here we are on the last little bit of the of connective tissue. We're talking about the specialized connective tissues, so the ones that don't really connect one start one tissue to another tissue. So we're going to start with ones that are involved in creating support and structures, starting with cartilages. So there are three different cartilages, but the ones I want to highlight are the hyaline cartilage and the elastic cartilage. So looking at these, I want you to notice right off the bat that they do, that here are the cells, and the cells are going to be located in little spaces. We're gonna talk about that in a second. And then here is the ground substance that is between the cells, right? So that's connective tissue, it's got extracellular matrix, non-living stuff between the cells, and here is the ground Substance. So looking at the ground substance between hyaline cartilage and the ground substance in elastic cartilage, why, where does the difference come from? How do they look different? When I look at it, I can really see that for the elastic cartilage, it's called elastic cartilage because instead of having smooth glassy uh, ground substance, it has little fibers in it and those fibers are elastic fibers okay so i like to me this the image that i see when i look at this is that hyaline cartilage looks like glass and if you've ever seen like those sculptures made of glass you have the to me it looks like glass with bubbles in it right so you can have this very, very smooth, glassy surface. That's the ground substance. And then you have the bubbles, which would be the cells inside of the spaces. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you what those are called in a second. Whereas the elastic cartilage, to me, I call that hairy glass with bubbles because it looks very similar, but the major difference would be instead of having that smooth kind of solid looking um, ground substance, it has these fibers, these elastic fibers running all through it. Okay, so hairy glass with bubbles. So the, the presence of those fibers denotes a difference in function. And so hyaline cartilage is found multiple places. It, for one thing, it holds up, it provides structure in the trachea and in the larynx. Another place that is found as sort of an in cap at the end of bones when you look at synovial joints here creates what's called the articular cartilage there. Whereas the elastic fibers, because of the presence of those elastic fibers, they, that makes it stretchy and recoil, so that makes it flexible. So that's why your ear, you can flex it in all different places and it's just going to spring back into where how it was before. Okay, so the elastic cartilage, that's going to allow more flexibility and recoil than the hyaline cartilage, which does not recoil. Uh, another place is your nose, for example, right? Your nose has a lot of good structure in it. The tip of your nose is made up of that hyaline cartilage, and it's not as flexible as that elastic cartilage in the ear. Okay, so elastic cartilage, it's elastic like that because of the elastic fibers. Okay, so let's talk about those cells. So I know I kind of alluded to it, but let's name them now. So the ending of a word, sight. What does sight mean? Sight means cell. Okay, so again, that's coming up a lot. So make sure you really have a good understanding of what that means. So we have the adipocyte. Remember, that was the fat cell. And now we have the chondrocyte. So whenever you see chondro, C-H-O, in D, chondro, chondro, that means cartilage. So a cartilage cell is going to be called a chondrocyte. And those chondrocytes, they are going to be encased inside of that ground substance. It creates hard support, right? So that's solid stuff. So in order for the cell to kind of survive, it has to be inside of a little space, or I like to think of it as sort of like a cave, like a little cave surrounded by solid ground substance. And that little cave, the space itself is called a lacuna, if it's singular, or lacunae, if it's plural. Okay, so we have the chondrocyte itself, that's the cell, 
and then the space that the cell lives inside of, that is lacuna. Okay, lacuna matata. It's just my crazy. <laughs> okay, so we have the ground substance between it. Remember for hyaline cartilage, smooth and glassy, no fibers, whereas the elastic cartilage is going to have elastic fibers. Okay, on to bone. Bone is also a good, good a way to support structures that provides the shape and structure of your face. It allows for muscles to pull on and move your body. And so when we look at uh, bone, there's two different types of bone. We have spongy bone and compact bone. For now, we're just going to be looking at compact bone. And compact bone is organized into what are called osteons. Okay, so if you look at the compact bone, the solid part of the bone, it's organized into these long columns. And those columns, one full column across, is called an osteon. And those osteon are, uh, so if you think of it like tree rings, which is how I like to think of it, one full tree, okay, so for the full distance across, that's one osteon. And then in the middle of each osteon, you have a, a little canal running all the way through it. That's called the central canal. So if you take a cylinder and you cut it in half, you're gonna see those circles. In the middle of the circle, you'll see a darker circle. That's the central canal. And in real life, because remember bones are living, that's where you're going to find the nerves and the blood vessels are gonna run along in the central canal. And then if you look carefully here, you'll see that the uh, surrounding the central canal, you have layers, concentric layers that go all the way around. Those are each layer, so one layer is called a lamella, okay, or lamellae if it's plural, okay, so one layer, lamella. And then sandwiched between the lamella, you're going to have a little cavity, a space, and do you remember what the spaces were called for cartilages? It's the same word. They are lacuna or lacunae if it's plural, okay, so that is where you're going to find the bone cells and the bone cells do have a name that you need to know. So remember, site means cell. Now we have a new one that we wanna add to your list that is an osteo. So osteo means bone, okay? So that's why these are called osteons related to bone. So we have osteocyte is the, is the cell, the Space that the osteocyte lives inside of and it's really difficult to see. You can't really see the space and the reason is because the cell takes up all of the space. That would be the lacuna. And the last one we need to talk about is the canaliculi. So coming off of the osteocyte, it has these long processes that come off of it and those processes run inside of tiny little canal-like slits that run and connect one lacuna to another lacuna. And this allows those osteocytes to trap to uh, pass nutrients and oxygens to each other and also allows them to maintain the, the ground, the calcified matrix between the cells. Okay, so they are the canal iculi, canal iculi. Okay, so one full thing. That's an osteon, big circle in the middle, that's a central canal. One concentric layer, that is a lamella. Sandwiched between them, these dark spots, those would be the osteocytes, and the osteocytes, which are the cells, live inside lacuna, which is the space. And then radiating out of the lacuna, those little black lines all over those, the place, those are the canaliculi, which allow them to communicate and pass nutrients to each other. Okay, so that's the osteon. And so when you look in the microscope, oh, I should have shown you this before, sorry. You can see the, all the structures, central canal, osteocyte, canaliculi, Lamella. Okay, so I really suggest that you go ahead and pause the video and try practicing just 
just draw it out, right? So you, you'll have to do this for lab anyways. You might as well go ahead and practice, right? So one big circle in the middle, the cells radiating out. Those are the kuna, and bam, you're done. Okay, so obviously you want to spend just a little bit more time, maybe get, do some more canaliculi, but this is an easy way to just make sure that you understand the, the shapes and give you like a sense of the, the generalized shapes that you're going to see. Okay, on to blood, then we'll be done. For the blood, remember blood is a connective tissue and the matrix, the extracellular matrix for the blood is called plasma. That is the liquid part of the blood. But when you look through the microscope or if you look at a picture for this class, the, um, the, you're not going to see plasma because it won't stay on the slide. So that's just represented by this empty space kind of in between it. And then you have the formed elements, which are just cells or cell fragments. The first one is the urethrocytes, also known as red blood cells. So all of these parts down here, what I call dipping dots is what it looks like to me. The dipping dots, those little pink shapes all over it, just everywhere, my, most numerous by far, those are the urethrocytes. And then looking around, you'll see some white blood cells. Collectively, white blood cells are called leukocytes, but each one does have a name. For example, this is a neutrophil, and this would be a lymphocyte here. Those are involved in immunity. And then the last little piece, or see these tiny little purple dots? Those are going to be the platelets, also known as thrombocytes. Okay, so thrombocytes or platelets, those are the tiniest, tiniest little purple dots in between them. Okay, so when, when you look at it closer, um, I don't remember exactly which ones it covered. Oh, good, I have, I have it here. I have it here. The ones that you'll need to draw for your, for your lab is the erythrocytes. Remember, those are the ones that are just everywhere. Please note that they don't have a nucleus. No nucleus in there. Then we have the neutrophil. The thing that's distinctive about the neutrophil is that instead of having a circular nucleus, it looks like the nucleus was all chopped up. So it has what we called a lobed nucleus. So three to five lobes, that's a neutrophil. A lymphocyte is going to have a super, super, super round nucleus, and it's an extra, extra large nucleus too, so it takes up most of the space. And remember that platelets, those are involved in blood clotting and also known as thrombocytes. Those are very, very tiny little purple dots. Okay, so make sure you can draw each one of those pieces. Last little thing. Just a reminder, it feels like a lot of different things. And yes, they're all connective tissues. Try to remember, well, why are they all connective tissues? It's because they have lots of extracellular matrix and they're all derived from mesenchyme, okay? And the other thing you wanna go ahead and organize it, one convenient way to organize it is by general function. Okay, that's the last of it. Last little reminder, if I say the word primary, I'm looking for one of these four. We talked, we're going to talk about epithelial tissues and connective tissues, and then we'll talk about nervous tissues and muscle tissues later. Bye-bye!